Since I started my YouTube channel, I've been getting this question a lot. I want to start a YouTube channel, but what kind of camera should I get? And for most people, especially beginners, I've been telling them to just stick with their smartphones because for a lot of people, spending maybe $50 on a good lighting and a good microphone will make a much bigger difference in the quality of your videos rather than spending $500 on a camera that you don't really know how to use. I mean, I don't want you to spend a lot of money on a new camera and get disappointed by the quality of it and stop using it and let it sit in the closet for five years. But for people who are a little more serious and who are already kind of at that level, I've been mostly recommending the Canon SL2. Just to let you know, this is not a full review of the camera. This camera has been out for almost two years now and if you want to learn more about specs and numbers, there are many other videos on YouTube that can tell you those things or you can just go to Canon website and read all about it. This video is more for beginner YouTubers or vloggers who are maybe looking to buy their first cameras or looking to upgrade their smartphone cameras with something a little more professional. This is one of the smallest and lightest DSLRs that Canon makes right now. And if I'm not mistaken, it is also the cheapest DSLR that Canon makes that has a flip out articulating touchscreen and also Canon's dual pixel autofocus. And since this is a video aimed towards beginners, uh, if you don't know what dual pixel autofocus is, it's basically Canon's autofocusing system for video that lets you track your face automatically and also anything that you select on the screen. If you're used to shooting videos on your smartphones or GoPro or anything like that, you probably never had to worry about focusing because pretty much everything is in focus all the time. But with bigger cameras and with bigger lenses, with bigger apertures, you start to get that nice background separation and the background blur. And you can do that with the video too, but obviously you have to make sure that the right subject is in focus. So the dual pixel autofocus and the flip out touchscreen, these two features alone can make your lives as vloggers a lot easier compared to a lot of the other cameras from other manufacturers. I mean, a lot of the times, a lot of cameras offer great autofocus, but not the flip out touchscreen. And some cameras have the flip out screen, but then they don't offer great autofocus especially for tracking faces. And right now, Canon is the only brand that offers both of those features on a variety of their products. Just to kind of demonstrate how important autofocus is, let me turn off the autofocus on my lens right now. So right now, I'm kind of in focus. I'm about two feet away from the lens right now. And if I move forward, you can see my face becomes more and more blurry. And then if I also move back, I become blurry again. And when I come back to where I was, I, I'm kind of back in focus. And with the flip out screen, at least I can see myself that I'm kind of in focus right now or out of focus. But without these two features, your lives will be a lot harder as vloggers. And right now the Canon SL2 is the cheapest camera where you can get both of those features. And it being a Canon DSLR, obviously you can use all kinds of different Canon lenses. It has a, a mount for a, an external microphone and also a tripod. So it pretty much has everything you need as a vlogger. And I just want to say, if you're buying your first camera, you have to understand that there's no such thing as a perfect camera. It doesn't exist. No matter what brand, no matter what price range, there's no such thing as a perfect camera for everybody. Everyone shoots videos differently. Everyone shoots different things. Some people like to set up a camera on a tripod and talk in a room like I am. Some people like to walk around the city with a camera on a gorilla pod. Some people like to travel to exotic locations and harsh conditions, so they may need better weather ceiling and bigger batteries. And some people like to travel light, so they need a smaller and lighter camera. So everyone wants and needs different cameras, but the SL2, in my opinion, feels like a good all-around camera for most beginners. And another thing that you have to understand as a beginner is that a lot of people think of buying a first camera as a very serious and important decision, but I don't think it really needs to be because when you first buy a camera and you don't like it, you can always return it or if it's been a few months or a few years, you can always resell it on eBay and get another one. Used camera gears tend to sell very quickly on eBay. I buy and sell new and used lenses and camera bodies all the time. So think of it this way, you buy a camera for say, $500 and then after a year you want to sell it and buy something else and you just sell it on eBay for a little bit less maybe like $400 that means you had this camera for an entire year and you paid a hundred dollars for it I mean you have to pay about that much to rent a camera for a week and when you're a beginner and you don't have like 20 lenses laying around it's also very easy to switch systems also so you buy a Canon camera and you don't like something and you can just sell all your gears and then switch to Nikon or Sony or vice versa so whatever camera you end up buying 
or whatever brand that you end up choosing, don't ever feel like that's gonna be the brand or the camera that you're gonna stick with forever. So with that out of the way, let's talk more about the camera itself. Like I said, it is a very small and light affordable camera that offers a lot of nice features for vloggers, but also like I said, by no means this is a perfect camera for everybody. One of the weaknesses of this camera is that it does not offer internal stabilization. So if you are one of those people who want to walk around the city with the camera in their hands, uh, this may not be the best camera for that. But at the same time, a lot of Canon lenses offer stabilization. And you know, to be honest, the whole handheld vlogging thing, it's really not for everybody. And unless you're like on a skateboard all the time like Casey Neistat, it's very, very hard to get good footages while hand holding a DSLR. Like you ever watch those videos where people are just running around with the camera in their hands and the whole video just looks like this? I mean, if you're trying to portray a movement for like one or two seconds, that's fine. But then if the entire video is like this for 20 minutes, then that becomes really hard to watch. So if you are planning on doing a lot of running gun style shooting or walk around vlogging, I would recommend maybe looking into a action cam like a GoPro 7 or maybe the Osmo Pocket or even a cell phone gimbal like the Osmo Mobile 2. And another feature that you might miss on this camera is 4K, especially if you're coming from a higher end Android phone or an iPhone. But you also have to really think about how much you need 4K and if you actually have the computing power to process 4K files all the time. And like I said, if you're a beginner, having a good lighting will make a much bigger difference in your video quality than having higher resolution. So I just turned off my light and I'm recording myself at 25,600 ISO right now. And do you think this footage will look better if it was 4K? I don't think so. And there's another popular Canon camera for vloggers uh, called the M50, which is a mirrorless camera. And there are a few reasons why I recommend the SL2 over the M50, and one of them is price. The body alone, the M50 costs maybe $100 more or sometimes $200 more. And the M50 also uses a different Canon lens mount called the EFM mount. And the EFM mount lenses tend to cost a little more as well. For example, this uh, 10 to 18 is a very, very popular lens for vloggers for the EFS mount. And the EFM, equivalent of that is 11 to 22 I think and that costs sometimes a hundred or hundred and fifty dollars more than this. And yes, with the M50, you can use an adapter to use the Canon's DSLR lenses, but also the adapters cost money. So that's an additional cost that you have to think about. And even though the M50 is a mirrorless camera and this is a DSLR, there's really not a huge difference in size and weight. I think the SL2 weighs just over 400 grams and then the M50 weighs just under 400 grams. And of course, if you're using an adapter, that difference doesn't really matter anymore. And the M50 does offer 4K, but then in 4K, for some reason, you lose that dual pixel autofocus. And there's also a massive crop in 4K. So instead of using a full sensor, uh, the camera uses the middle bit of the sensor where it's 4K resolution. So even with an extremely wide lens like this, 10 millimeters on the 4K in M50 becomes something like 16 or 17 millimeters. So for vloggers, the whole thing just becomes kind of pointless. So yeah, the 4K and the internal stabilization are pretty much the only thing this camera is missing. It can shoot 1080p at 24 and 30 and 60 frames per second. So yeah, to summarize, this is a great camera for vloggers or beginners. And yes, there's no 4K, but like I said, you should first learn how to use a camera and then learn about lighting before you worry about resolution. And then in a few months or a few years down the line, then you can worry about what specific features you need on a camera and then upgrade. So what do you guys think? Do you think this is the right camera for you or do you already own an SL2? Let me know down in the comments and that's it for me today and thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. Like you ever watch those videos where people are just running around with the camera in their hands and the whole video just looks like this?